Hello, my name is Mike Bollinger. I am with TVS Pro. Today we are going to talk about how to choose a screen for HD resolution as well as choosing a screen for 4K uh, and really how to optimize the best image quality from a projected image uh, in a variety of different situations. So uh, let's kind of, this is kind of going to be some of the things we're going to talk about. First of all, when to do projection, when to do flat panel. Um, there's a lot more screen technology than people really realize or understand, I think. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that, kind of the purposes of, of really what a screen is doing. And then some of the factors of the screen materials themselves, um, the, how they can create a uniform image, uh, what gain is, uh, how they interact and in, in, uh, can affect color, uh, viewing angle as well as uh, borders or no borders and then choosing a screen for HD and 4K like I mentioned. So the, the first thing we'll talk about is kind of some of the benefits of doing projection and then some of the benefits of doing a flat panel. So projectors have come down over the years and we now have fantastic projectors for you know fairly inexpensive cost uh, ranging anywhere from you know five or six hundred dollars for even 1080p projectors and then of course going on up from there. So they're really uh, the best value when you want to do a large image. Uh, they can be seamless, so we can do really large images seamless without having to, you know, do a video wall with panels in between or borders, bezels in between. Uh, and they are really best when we can either control the light somewhat or when we have full control of the light and can darken the room. Um, however, we do have some exceptions to that now that we have uh, high ambient light rejecting screens, we can do that in situations where before really projection wasn't the best option. So a living room, a boardroom with windows and things like that. And we'll talk a little bit about that and show a little bit of how that works. So uh, we now also can do cinema aspects such as 2.35 to 1 and 2.40, which is a wider than 16 by 9, which is the standard for television. And as you have probably seen your television, uh, in being a 16 by 9 format. So that's something that we can't do in a TV, but we can do in projection. Uh, and, uh, on the other hand, flat panels are, are really going to be your best option when you have a lot of light and um, it doesn't really matter you're going to have good contrast and good color regardless of that. Whereas we can address those situations uh, to a certain extent with projector, but uh, we have a little bit more control with, with a flat panel. However, um, uh, sizes, once we go above 90 inch, they get fairly, and even at 90 inch can be fairly expensive. Um, just to give you a kind of an idea, uh, you know, about the biggest, most common display that we do in terms of a flat panel is about a 98 inch and you're talking in the 17 to $25,000 range and then they go on up from there um, not a whole lot larger but they they can jump up in price uh, pretty quick so um, but as I mentioned flat panels have great color contrast and and uh, are a very good option as well so it just kind of depends on what the application is. Uh, I did not. So one of the things that we will be doing is uh, we are having a drawing. So if you're streaming this live or if you're here, uh, we'll have a, a drawing at the end of this for a, a Blu-ray player. So uh, first, let's talk about some of the steps in selecting uh, the, the right screen. So first is determining the screen size, selecting the correct format, picking the type of screen and, and choosing the screen material. So what does the screen do? Uh, basically, a screen is the, the last piece in the chain of an audio video system. So they're, they're necessary to, to really achieve the best image quality. And so uh, a screen helps provide a uniform image. Whereas if you're projecting on a wall, um, that can, can be all over the place in terms of the, the color, the, the uniformity, the, the evenness of, of the image. Um, and a, flat, or a screen helps with that. Um, it, it reflects the projected light back to the audience. Even, so some people say, well, can I just do it on my wall and get a really flat wall? And, and although you can do what they call a level five surface, uh, which they, they, it has to do with the way that they actually finish the wall and, and do a skim coating of mud over it and uh, use the halogen light and make sure it's all flat. Um, it, it, first of all, it's not cheap. It, it's, it's fairly expensive. And you'll never be able to get the same quality of image on a wall as you will with some of the, the um, 
the screen materials with the technology that's that's incorporated in those nowadays. Um, and the other thing is a screen helps provide gain to control projected light um, distribution, whereas a wall, depending on the color of the paint and what paint it is, that's, that's going to be kind of all over the place. So uh, picking the right size, um, there are a lot of different um, kind of rules of thumb that have kind of come and gone and, and some of that has, has been based on uh, limitations in source material that we've had or limitations in resolution of displays. Um, some of those have kind of changed over time because as resolution has improved both in terms of our sources and our displays, um, we've been able to sit closer and, and still be more comfortable um, and, and not see some of the degradation that we had in the past. However, um, personal preference I think really pl plays a bigger part in that more than, than anything. It's, it's just like when you go to the theater, some people like front row, some people like back row and somewhere in between it's really what you personally like. So, uh, but, but you want to make sure when you're picking a screen size that it's something that uh, is going to be comfortable for everybody in the room. Most people don't want to be like front row at an IMAX all the time. That's probably not the best thing. So bigger is not always better in that aspect. Um, one, one easy way you can do it is you can take the, um, you can calculate the diagonal of the screen by basically taking the depth of the room and dividing it by two. That gives you kind of a ballpark. Usually that's kind of a minimum recommended size. Uh, most people want to go a little bit larger than that. And the other thing is, is depends on the resolution of your projector. Um, for 4K, for example, the optimum viewing is sitting at least um, one and a half times uh, the height of the image or even closer to really take advantage and to see the difference in the resolution of the 4K has to offer. Um, so you want to pick a size that you'll like, optimize image quality, uh, and, and by that I mean not only for resolution but also for brightness. That's going to be dependent upon how bright your projector is in terms of how big you can actually go as well. So um, one of the things we'll talk about here is aspect. So aspect is important. There's really two main types of aspect that we look at for um, home theater use. Uh, generally speaking, that is going to be 16 by 9, and that is going to be 2.35 to 1 uh, for CinemaScope. So this drawing, this picture here, kind of gives you an idea. Uh, this here in the middle is 4 by 3, so that's the old square format that televisions were um, back in the days when we had tube televisions. CRTs. Uh, the red here is 16 by 9. So that's traditional widescreen. That's what your flat panel, your LCDs, your plasmas, your OLEDs, those, those are all going to be 16 by 9. And then as you can see, 2.35 to 1 is the widest aspect, and that's more common for um, a lot of movies. Uh, so types of screens. What kind of scre screen will fit your application best? So there's uh, several different types of screens. Um, we have portable screens, we have a fixed wall-mounted screen, such as this one that we have here. We have roll-down or motorized screens. Um, and, and in those, they can either be non-tensioned or they can be tensioned. And we'll talk a little bit about that, um, some that has to do with the material uh, as well. Um, and then there's some specialty screens out there, um, especially for you know, high-end applications where you know, screens are going to be motorized and come up from the floor or, or fold down or a number of different things like that. Uh, and then one of the latest um, trends in, in screen technology, not so much technology, but just in screen application is, is borderless uh, and zero edge uh, instead of having you know, a traditional black border around it. And there's some pros and cons in that. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And then one of the other things is, do you want to go flat or do you want to go curved? Um, now we are starting to see um, some, some more curved screen options, uh, which kind of gives you the, the feel of like a cinemascope. So uh, let's talk about that. So curved screens do have some distinct advantages, uh, one of which is uh, as an, an image, especially up close, um, there can be some distortion just through the lens, especially as we get towards the edges. And by having a slightly curved screen, that can help with that, especially if we're doing like an ultra short or a, a wide angle lens. Um, so that can help compensate for that. Some people also feel that a, a curved screen can give you a greater sense of immersion. It kind of makes you feel like you're more part of it um, and, and when you're watching the movie. But that's also somewhat of a personal preference. Some people would prefer a flat um, image and, and say it's kind of more like looking through a window. So that's it's really kind of what you feel is good for you. Uh, but curved screens can also de deliver a more uniform illuminated image uh, for, for central localized seating if you're going to be in the middle uh, with a little bit less hot spotting uh, than would normally be on a reflected 
um, with, a, say, a traditional flat screen. Again, all of these might be minor differences, so we might be getting a little bit picky here, but um, those are kind of some of the differences between curved or flat. Uh, choosing the proper screen material. So we're going to go in and show some differences in screen materials here in a minute, uh, so you can actually see that there are actually quite a bit of differences between them. But this is really critical to getting the best image when you're dealing with a projection system. A lot of people you know, think, and they spend a lot of time looking at the projector, but what they overlook is that there's a lot of differences between screen materials and they can make a huge difference. Uh, the other thing to, to kind of keep in mind is that generally speaking, your screen is gonna be something that you're gonna keep for a long time you may be replacing a projector in 10 years or something like that, but unless there you have a need, the screen doesn't have to change. So a lot of times screen materials or screens in general might be as, especially in the, when we're talking about some of the lower cost projectors that we have, the screens may seem expensive, but in comparison to what projectors used to be, uh, they, they aren't. And if you look at it, it's a, it's a longer investment and over a longer period of time, they, they may not be either. So, uh, but gain. Gain is basically a measurement of reflected um, performance. So it's, it's related to a universal measurement uh, or standard of measurement uh, that relates to how magnesium carbonate uh, reflects light. So rather than absorbing light, uh, magnesium carbon, carbonate reflects projected light back with perfect evenness. So there's no, you know, unevenness. It's it's perfectly uniform. So the closest thing to that is is a matte white screen, and that's kind of the reference of a with a gain of 1.0, which is what basically the gain of magnesium carbonate is. And then uh, we have what we call negative gain screens and we have positive gain screens. So negative gain screens is when they go below 1.0, so like a 0.9, a 0.6, um, and generally that means we're, we're losing a little bit of brightness versus if we were looking at that on a matte white screen. Uh, and then we have positive gain that are basically taking that brightness and, and of course we can't create brightness, but we can funnel it back to a, an area. So we're getting, it looks like we're getting more light. And basically generally there's a trade-off as, as we get higher gain, we're also losing maybe a little bit of a wider angle. So those are some things to look at. But uh, you, generally screen materials are somewhere between, you know, a 0.6 on the low end and, and as high as a 2 or a 3 in most cases. But, but most of the screen materials that we use for home theater are anywhere from the 0.9 or 0.8 to about a 1.5 uh, or a 1.3. Um, so viewing angle, which I talked about, that is basically how far off axis you can get. Um, where the image is, is still visible, but and, and you're not perceiving anything less than, say, 50% shift in, in brightness. Uh, and, and that's kind of how they, they rate the viewing angle. So screen flatness, that that's really has to do with whether we're dealing with a non-tensioned or a tensioned screen. So you've all seen a manual pull-down screen at a school or a business or or wherever, and uh, especially if there's wind or things like that, that screen is gonna move. But the other thing is even if it's not moving from wind, it doesn't lay perfectly flat. You might notice that the, the overall screen kind of has a little bit of a warp or a curve, or you know, it's not perfect. They, uh, that, that's, those materials are generally a fiberglass-based material, and they, they're fairly heavy, and they're designed to lay pretty flat, and they do a pretty good job. But especially with uh, high definition or higher resolution sources, you, you really can't get the, the best image quality out of those. And the other thing is, is if we have an image that doesn't lay perfectly flat, you'll notice that when you're watching a movie and the image pans or somebody walks across the screen, you'll, you'll see it kind of warp. So that's where the advantage of going to a tension screen is, and that, that can be either in a fixed screen like we have here, or it can be in a rigid screen, or it can be in a motorized or a uh, drop-down screen that has, you know, guy wires or tab tensioning or some different ways of, of pulling that image taut so that it, it lays perfectly flat. Uh, and then the last thing is, is do we want it to be acoustically transparent? So a lot of times, and, and of course when you go to the movie theater, you don't generally see the speakers in the front because they're all behind the screen. Well, we can do that in the home theater as well. Uh, we can do it one of two ways. We can do it with an acoustically um, transparent microperf, uh, which means they actually take the screen material and they poke holes in it. So we can do it with that. And the other way, which is kind of a newer way and some of the, the better materials, at least I feel, are a woven material, which allows um, for a finer 
a finer grain, if you will, uh, basically a, a less of a pattern, less problems in the image. And, and so those are the two different types of material there. And we'll look at a couple samples here in just a minute. So um, when we talk about choosing the material, there's some things to keep in mind. So image brightness, uh, which gain is going to come into that. But we want to make sure when we're choosing a screen that, that our image is bright enough. And one of the ways that we do that, the, the SMPTE or the standards, um, the SMPTE stands for the uh, Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, and they, they've, in a, it's pretty complicated, but in a nutshell, uh, they have created a set of standards, and, and cinema standards are anywhere from 16 to 22 foot Lamberts of measured brightness off of the screen. Um, and, and so that foot Lamberts is also the same as one candela squared, which is roughly 55 to 75 lux. So these are all terms that just relate to brightness. Um, there's a way that you can calculate foot Lamberts, and that's by you take the, the lumen of the projector. So let's say we've got a 2000 lumen projector. In this case, we'll talk about, let's say, a, a 100 inch screen. So the surface area of a 100 inch screen is about 30 square feet. So we take the 2000 divided by 30, and that gives us 66 foot Lamberts. So that would give us the, the approximate brightness of a projector that's 2000 lumens on a 100 inch screen. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind is where do you actually get the brightness rating of the projector? Specifications are a good guideline, especially to use between or within a manufacturer, but if you're comparing one manufacturer to another, they can really only be used as a guideline because they're all over the map. Um, and, and that also depends on how that projector's been set up. Is it calibrated? Um, what does the color look like you know, in the highest brightness mode? So those are all things to kind of keep in mind. Um, image luminance is found by multiplying the foot Lamberts times the projective screen reflectivity uh, or gain. So for a screen with a gain of 1.3, for example, on this 100 inch uh, example that we were talking about, we would have about 85.8 candelas squared uh, per square foot uh, of, of screen luminance on the screen with a 2000 lumen projector on a 100 inch screen. Um, but there's some shortcuts. Uh, for example, Projector Central is a great place to go. Uh, they actually have a tool you can go in, type in the projector, and uh, they'll give you, it'll give you, you tell it the screen size, it'll give you the throw distance, uh, or you can put in the throw distance and then it will give you a rough idea of the foot Lamberts so that you can kind of guesstimate what's, what's going to be happening there. So, choosing the proper materials, we talked about negative gain, we talked about positive gain. The one thing we haven't talked about, but we're going to talk about, are high ambient light rejecting screens. So, negative gain screens, um, some examples of those materials would be like the Stuart Greyhawk, HD Progressive from Daylight, Solar Gray from Screen Innovations, or Pure Gray, um, High Contrast from Dragonfly, Tech Vision Gray from... Uh, Draper, as well as, you know, there's, there's a few other screen manufacturers out there as well. These are some of the, probably the largest and most recognizable ones. Positive gain screens are going to be Matt White, HD Progressive, Studio Tech, uh, which, by the way, the screen that we're looking at is a Stewart Studio Tech 130. That's, that's one of the standards in the industry, also in the motion picture industry. Most of the um, editing studios and screening studios in Hollywood uh, use Stewart uh, screens with a Studio Tech 130 material or, or, or like an ultra map. But um, the other thing is, is the different materials are, are better for 4K or, or, or HD um, or lower resolution. So um, I've kind of put that to the side of there so you can kind of see. Um, Gamma, Maestro, Chroma White, ISF, that's an uh, elite uh, prime vision screen material, which is very good. Uh, Tech Vision White, again, day, or Draper, and uh, Ultra White, which is a Dragonfly material. So high ambient light rejecting screens are the type of screens that you're going to want to use in a situation where we can't really control the lights, and maybe we don't want to have to. And so, but the problem is, is projectors cannot create black. You'll never get black blacker than what that screen is. So in a situation where you have ambient light in the room, you're not going to get black until you turn the lights down or we come up with a darker screen material. So this is an example of a high ambient light rejecting screen. This is to kind of show you the difference and we'll put on some video here so that you can see it. But you can see immediately the difference in our black levels between this just with the uh, little bit of room light that we have in here. 
So I've got some can lighting and some uh, rope lighting around uh, the edge. Not a ton of lighting actually right on the screen, but, but just some ambient light. The other thing is with ambient light rejecting screens is there's different types that re reject light differently. So this is a supernova screen. This is really good at reflecting m light from above. It's not as good as at reflecting light from the sides, um, but it is pretty good at, at reflecting it from, from above. Uh, some of the screen materials like black diamond and slate uh, are a little bit different in that they reflect light or yeah, they ref reject ambient light um, from the sides as well as from the top and the bottom. Um, but some of these, so Black Diamond and Slate, those are from Screen Innovations. Parallax is a daylight uh, high contrast material. Phantom is a Stuart, Dark Star Affinity, and Dark Star, uh, as well as Polar Star. Those are uh, uh, an EPV or Elite Prime Vision screen materials. Tech Vision ALR or ambient light rejection, that's Draper. And then Supernova is what we're looking at here, which is a DNP screen. So as you can see, just with this, it obviously gives us better blacks, but it's also going to give us some richer colors. And we're going to switch to a source here now. And you can kind of ignore the fact that the image might actually go over the screen, but uh, it's for something that I have set up here in a minute that we'll look at. So any of these will work, but there's a specific scene I wanted to show that's got a little bit more color so you can see what it also does with color because having higher contrast also helps with colors. Well, this one will work. So you can, you can see immediately with just the amount of light we have in the room, obviously we have much better contrast over here on the right hand. You can see, especially in the darker areas, any place where there's shadows, it's going to be uh, much, much better on, on this side here. Now I'm going to take um, and kind of emphasize that with a light here showing kind of an example of, of what it would look like with even more light. So you can see the screen on the, on the left really washes out, but yet we still have a pretty good image on the right. Now again, this is more light than what we would generally recommend for uh, a projection setup, but you can see it, it does make a difference and, and you can actually see uh, that we still have pretty decent contrast and it's certainly still watchable on the right, much closer to, to what uh, an LCD or a flat panel would look like. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to show you here is what some of the different materials look like. So this, for example, is uh, a high ambient light rejecting material from Stuart. Uh, and as you can see, it really brings out the black levels. Um, we don't have a lot of color in this particular scene, but we do have more contrast. So uh, it, that's a situation where when we have ambient light, it's going to be much better to bring out those details. Um, this is another material here, which is not a high ambient light rejecting material, but is simply a high contrast material. So this has a gain of, uh, I think it's like 1.2, but, and it does provide a little bit better contrast in a situation where we have a little bit of ambient light, but maybe not a ton. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to look at here real quick um, Bubba, can you turn those lights off real quick? Okay, so the, these materials here, I want to just show you um, these are what reference white materials. So these all have uh, a gain of, of 1.3, which is the same as the Studio Tech 130 that we have. But if you'll notice, there are some differences even amongst these. So, for example, um, you can see that there's a little bit of color difference even among those. Oops, actually, let me do this. So even with white materials, there are still going to be differences um, among those. You can see they're, they're minor, and I don't know if that's going to really come through on the, the 
live stream, but there are quite a bit of differences in materials, um, even that are supposed to be a reference white material. So, Baba, can you turn those lights back on? So, the, there's, there's really, screens make a, a huge difference. Um, do we have any questions before I kind of show you uh, an example of what a really good screen can look like with 4K? Were there any questions online? Um, we do have a comment, but it's, it's not really a question, but it's projectors definitely have their benefits, but I'm happy with my OLED TVs. It seems, it seems that the technology on projectors aren't updating as fast as compared to these TVs. It's not really related to screens, but... Sure. Uh, no, that's a great comment. Um, I don't know. Oh, that's right. So uh, the, the, the comment was that was made from uh, somebody on the live listening to the live stream or watching the live stream was that uh, the, it seems like uh, the technology and projectors isn't advancing as much as it is in, say, flat panels such as OLED and some of those kinds of things. Uh, although I don't know if I would completely agree with it. Projector technology has improved dramatically over the past several years. Uh, I would say it's it's certainly getting better every year. I, I would agree it's not getting you know it's not groundbreaking from one year to the next right now because they're already so good. But in most cases, I wouldn't say that flat panels are changing that dramatically um, right now either. Uh, I mean, there's definitely differences. Um, bottom line is is it really depends on the application. I I have nothing against flat panel. I own a flat panel, I love it, um, but I think that there is a place for both. It really just depends on what they are um, and, and what you're going for. I, I think a, a projection, and a projector and a screen gives you a totally different feel. You can do it way larger than you can ever do a flat panel. Um, you know, we've got here in a minute, we'll look at 130 inch. That's not possible with a flat panel. Uh, we just don't have anything that big. I mean, even with a video wall, which if we did a video wall, we'd be probably talking in the $100,000 range to do something that size, and we'd have seams amongst them, whereas we don't have that here. And so it's a very different um, type of technology. Sure. So the question was, can, there, can projection technology uh, get as high a resolution, as, as sharp and as crisp as what a good quality high resolution television can do? And the, the, the answer to that is absolutely. Uh, if we can get the right circumstances, if we can control the lighting uh, properly or get the proper screen for the application, uh, we have a variety of projectors now that are 4K that are actually affordable, starting in the you know, $1,200, $1,500 range and, and certainly going on up from there. Uh, granted, there's you know, projectors over $100,000, but uh, for most of us, that's not really in the range. But uh, yeah, absolutely. We can give an Im image quality that, that absolutely is, is on par with that of some of the best flat panels out there. Uh, the image that we were looking at here, again, this is about 130 inch diagonal and the particular projector we were looking at it with is a laser, um, so solid state projector, DLP, 4K resolution, a phenomenal image quality, great contrast, and it's under four thousand dollars. So, um, you know, on par also with you know certainly price wise to to some of the best TVs that are out there. Um, but yeah, absolutely, that was a great question. It's a good question. Yeah, so the question was, is why does ours look so much brighter than that of what you see in a lot of movie theaters? So Cinema Standards is 16 to 22 foot Lamberts, uh, and that's open gate, meaning there's no film, and of course most of them are not film anymore, but um, but but in, in most cases, they're, they're somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, I believe, uh, you know, 14 to 16 is where they're supposed to be, but th that's not always the case. Uh, and and here, most of the projectors that we have now are, especially for home theater, are bright enough that we're able to, unless we're doing some crazy large image size, um, we're able to you know quadruple that of, of what you see in the theater. So and d most of the the theaters, at least here in Salt Lake. I don't know of any theaters in Salt Lake that are actually 4K right now. Um, Sony does build 4K. They were um, the first and I think one of the only ones that actually currently, uh, well, there's some new ones on the market, to do 4K for cinema. And there's, I think, about 30,000 4K projectors out there, but I don't think there's any in Salt Lake. So, question. yeah. Uh, the, the question is, do projectors last longer than TVs in terms of hardware long, longevity? 
Okay, so the question was, do projectors last longer than TVs in terms of hardware longevity? Um, the, the answer is, I would say, they're, they're similar in that regard. One of the downsides to a projector is in the past is they have a lamp, which you're, whereas a traditional television, unless it's the old style rear projections, do not. And so, uh, depending on the technology, you either have a backlight, or if it's a plasma, you have plasma uh, phosphors um, that, that eventually lose brightness over time. Uh, but in terms of the electronics, yes, they're on par. Uh, and the other thing is, is the technology in lamps has gotten much better, and the cost of lamps has come down. So, you know, most lamps, if, if they need to be replaced, most of the home theater projectors have a, an average life between anywhere from 4,000 in some cases 8,000 hours and uh, those lamps range anywhere from about uh, 150 bucks to you know $400 and uh, now with some of the newer projectors like the one that we're looking at here that are laser uh, is as the light source that's rated for 20,000 hours to half brightness which means that's a long time. In most cases that's longer than we're really going to have it by that point there's newer technology that's going to be better so um, and that's not even to the end of the life that's just half brightness so that was a great question